Welcome everyone, it's uh, the next episode of Telemedia News in 10 with me Jarvis Todd and our very own beach babe, the Mr Paul Skeldon. I put my t-shirt on especially. How was your holiday mate? Uh, well I'm still in the middle of it, uh, yes it was a staycation due to uh, coronavirus so yes I've been enjoying the uh, the temperate British weather but yeah no, it's been nice, it's been nice to have a bit of a rest but obviously I have still kept a weather eye on uh, what's happening in the news. You have indeed. And uh, so let's crack on. Uh, more telemedia joy ahead, more digital and more gamers than ever. Absolutely, yes. A couple of interesting things are uh, knocking about. Uh, it is quite quiet out there, thankfully, during August. But um, yes, UK consumers are going to be even more digital uh, as they come out of lockdown. I think the sort of lockdown has forced people you know, onto their mobiles, tablets, smart TVs to, to do everything from Zooming and talking to each other to playing games, gambling, all the rest of it. And uh, even as lockdown eases, they're all saying they're going to just be more digital. Massive opportunity, obviously, for um, the telemedia industry, uh, particularly the sort of carrier billing side. Again, we've been building along this theme for many weeks now that uh, people are doing more stuff with their mobile. They want to be entertained. Uh, they want to pay. They want to pay quickly. Carrier billing is the way to do it. So, um that's one sort of interesting set of research that's uh, that's out. We've also seen that um, it was a couple of weeks ago, in fact, but uh, uh, half the world's population are set to be gamers by 2024. That's three and a half billion people. Now, that's a massive opportunity. And that's not just sort of that's gaming and gambling and all those sorts of things. It's uh, it's incredible. And again, you know, it's one of the myth busters we're looking at doing is on gaming. Uh, and payments for gaming, it, you know, it again fits in beautifully. I really feel that carrier billing's time is coming. No doubt about it. And one of the uh, other issues that came out of that particular research was uh, that consumers were not prepared to negotiate on security issues. Mm. Um, and 72% uh, 70, stated that they would immediately switch to a uh, provider if they were not, exp uh, if they were to experience a data breach. And I, that brought up the interesting point about. Uh, if you're going to provide, if you're going to provide uh, uh, not just gaming solutions, but I mean any premium content, fraud is constantly an issue. And in fact, I had a conversation this week with Sam Media, uh, who highlighted that in order for them to deal with operators, uh, and one of the reasons that you know one of the, the key factors to get them on board is that they need to they need to demonstrate um, that you know how carefully they've um, that you know they've they've treated fraud and data security in order for them to be able to do business in the first place it's become a real kind of deal a deal breaker uh, and and giving and people that are taking it seriously are gaining a real competitive advantage so good for sam media for bringing that up and i i was also reminded that if you go to telemediaonline.co.uk uh, and you go to our white paper section there's a very good uh, case study from cookies factory and optics which also makes the same kind of point so um, worth remembering that, and I think something that we'll probably be um, focusing on, not just in the, the magazine and the, uh, the website, but also something that we'll be picking up in the conference for uh, telemedia in whatever form it takes, Paul. Absolutely, absolutely. Through we are very much multimedia these days and very digital uh, in keeping with where people want to uh, get their news and information. Uh, I think you're right about security. Massive uh, implications for all these people using digital services is the security uh, side of it, both keeping users themselves secure and the companies providing the services secure. So, um, yeah, there's some interesting stuff there. I mean, you might remember last time we uh, had our discussion, we talked about um, age verification. Uh, I think uh, again, you know, there's, there's a, a, a some of that technology could play a key role here as well. So uh, yeah, it's all ni nicely knitting itself together. Indeed. So um, this also links onto another uh, another story, which was talking about, uh, as you said, half the world's population will become gamers by 2024. Um, how did you see that linking with the the, the first story there? Well, I just think it's that sort of inexorable move towards sort of digital consumers. Uh, you know, that the, they are, you know, gaming is just taking off like like never before. It's always been popular, but it's now like almost everybody. Well, I say almost every half of almost everybody by 2024 will be playing games of some sort. Uh, and I think it's all part of that sort of rapid digitalization we've seen in the past few months because of the lockdown that's just set to continue. And it's just going to, to become the norm everywhere not just with gaming it'll be all sorts of content but i think that the the key thing is that these two 
sort of surveys both show where where consumers are heading and um and they're heading there very rapidly i think it, and they're going to want it to be easy and secure and safe and i hate i sound like a stuck record but carrier billing is the way to sort of bill for these services particularly snackable one-off you know quick fixes uh, because it offers all three it is secure it does verify who you are and it's it's easy to use and uh, yeah, I think it's uh, that's what's significant to the telemedia industry about this. I think there's also implications of uh, age verification and security and all those things. But um, it, you know, it all starts to fit together into this digital world, and we suddenly find ourselves in the middle of it. Uh, yeah, well, you're quite right. But this story also uh, uh, touched uh, another nerve with me because you know, my one of my pet hates is acronyms, and obviously, uh, I think they're overused. I think it makes uh, our industry difficult to communicate to laymen. Uh, we got another one this week. Gas. Yes, gas. gas. Have you so got gas? gas? Yeah. Now I, I've got gas. Uh, gas gaming as a service. I mean, like a couple of weeks ago, we talked about Maz. Uh, mobile as a service uh you know where's it all going to end i have to say paul you know i please don't support this ridiculous acronym uh pandemic it's got to stop um but anyway that was something so look out for gas and with maz and who knows where that's going to end um Absolutely. But the well, also... we want everyone to have gas uh yeah. is what we're advocating Quite right. Now, the article also referenced um, subscription models um, in the consumers apparently favoured that type of uh, unlimited model. We talked about this before, but it does also have its issues you know, from the past. But then again, the article also pointed out that there seems to be an opportunity for that sort of snacking, um, you know, pay per usage type of model, which is like more likely to attract existing consumers from PC and console platforms. So I just wonder what your thoughts were on that, because I know you are big on the stacking idea in terms of getting that to be a sort of onboarding mechanism, but it did seem as though the, re the research um, was clear that consumers pr do prefer subscriptions. So how do you see those two fit together? Well, I think, uh, I mean, I think that, uh, to address the, so you brought up the thing about subscriptions being a bit of a dirty word. I think they were, but I think now that everybody subscribes to something like Netflix or Amazon Prime and those kind of things, we are just living in a subscriptions world, so, it, so it's not a, a, a dirty word. Where I see this all coming together is that sort of, if I take myself as an example, I do subscribe to things like Netflix and Amazon Prime and, uh, and that. I don't subscribe to sports channels because I'm not that interested in sports, but I'm interested enough that I might want to sort of watch a match, uh, particularly a sort of big sort of, you know, crucial game or, or, or you know, I want to watch the World Cup or all those sorts of things. And I don't want to subscribe for a year at great expense just to do that. So I will I will snack it or I might want to just have a look at the highlights so we can laugh at, uh, you know, Man United or whatever. Um, uh, and so I'll pay for that. So, so I think what we see is that, yes, consumers prefer a subscription model, but for the things they're really into. But they also want a snackable model for things they might want to just snack or, you know, you might say to me, have you seen this, you know, goal from from whatever match? And I can't because I'm not a subscriber, but I could pay, you know, 50p to, to, to snack it and watch it. So I think we have to be careful of like, yes, consumers like subscriptions, but it depends what it's for. And they are also going to buy other stuff around it. So, um you know, that's how I see it fitting together. And, it, you know, you need both. And I think you know, I'll have my subscription will come out of my bank account every month. I won't really think about it, but I will, you know, turn to something easy like carrier billing to pay for, for a, a, to watch something very specific or to play a game or to have a go at something or to, to see something that I wouldn't normally want to sort of like watch all year round. And I think the, the article concluded, I, th I suppose, that at the beginning of what we see as being a huge growth market, it's very important to get that business model right. And it sounds as though um, you need to be mindful of both and probably offer both uh, in the right place at the right time in order to maximise your onboarding and to take advantage of what we see as being a huge sector. Um, we I, think so. I think so. We're, yes, we're, moving we're, on. Swiftly. This, this next story comes under the, what I would sort of put that sort of boring but important uh, uh, title, um, and it's uh, along the lines of customer service, but um, it is important, and I think you should highlight it, Paul. Well, thanks for highlighting it. Just give us a quick overview of what, uh, what came up. Well, about. I think there's a, there's, there's a couple of things. I mean, it's, it's a, it was a survey about sort of how people, you know, about bill shock, but I think it raises, raises a more important issue about customer service in general, particularly on the back of this idea that people are being more digital and, and more subscribe and then and snacking and 
all this digital consumption it is the more people use stuff the more problems they are going to be the more they need customer service uh, and how do we sort of manage that customer service now the survey thing we were talking about was was about bill shock and how people don't want to you know sort of suddenly find they, they're paying a fortune for a subscription they didn't really want which takes us back to what we were just talking about i think you need to be careful about managing the language around what people are paying for and signing up for well i think like i say there's a bigger issue of, of like how do you manage dealing with customers and how do you start to use all the things like whatsapp rcs text imessage voice calls iprn numbers for international sort of uh, customer service how does that all work together and that's all very much a kind of core telemedia industry thing that we've been doing for 20 30 years it's all come back onto the agenda uh, because we need to look at how to service customers and deal with them and um i think you know it's it's, it's important because this digital sort of swing uh, an uptake of digital services is not going to really work if people get a really rubbish service and can't complain and can't find a way to resolve any problems they might have. So I think on the back of, of building a sort of you know great digital economy, we need to also build a great customer service economy. Well, I agree with you, and I think what was really interesting when this story came out, what this week, and uh, you know over six months ago, one of the lead uh, presentations at Telemedia, well, Telemedia 2019. It was called Managing the Consumer Journey, and this was championed by uh, MCOM. Uh, and the the opening text was the consumer journey has evolved over the years and now with so many ways for the consumers to contact, uh, 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 sorry, contact, contact and complain. The post journey is, has never been more important. And, um, and that session was run by MCOM, uh, Tony Coyne, Emily Klaus from the wonderful digital Virgo and Tango Communications. And uh, if I remember rightly, uh, there was standing room only. So, so the telemedia industry uh, right back then was, you know, identified that this is one of the most important areas. And as you said, if the business is going to grow, then, you know, complaints or, or, or more customer interactions are going to are going to be an issue. And quite often, I think the point was made that, you know, when people call in about their bill, they're often in the wrong, but it's, it's getting them to understand why they're in the wrong. Mm. Uh, we, eliminate so many problems going forward we're over time paul we're over we're time. always over time mate we're always over time i was just going to quickly add that many of the things that we're seeing in the news now are stuff that we did deal with at uh, world telemedia 2019 back in october so uh, it's encouraging to see that we are you know very much sort of uh, on the money and slightly ahead of the curve in addressing a lot of the key issues so um hopefully the telemedia 8.1 when we uh, start rolling that out. Uh, we'll also be setting the agenda for 2021. I think the cat might be out of the bag there, Paul. You mean tell me 8.1, the, 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 the in online initiative that we haven't officially announced yet? Or have oh, we? No. By, by the oh, time no, but, but, it goes out. I don't know. Have, we, have, I, have I let the cat out of the bag? I, I thought it was common knowledge. Well, um, it, it, not quite. But as I say, I'm not quite sure when this is going out. So uh, by then... Okay, we might have a continuity issue there. I don't know. Anyway, well, we, listen, can always, we can always cut it out in the edit and no one will hear any of this at all. Exactly. exactly. All right, mate. Listen, time to go. You need to go write some more uh, excellent content. And I will see you in a couple of weeks' time for more Telemedia News in 10. You will indeed. Take care, everybody.